Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is The Plague of the Pharaohs. It was written by Alan Carey, and it's available from the Miskatonic Repository. Our game master is David Gassaway, and this is a one-shot. Before we begin, I would like to announce that we have we have a new patron. Michael Meese has pledged three euros a month to our club. Thank you so much, Michael. That being said, let's begin our journey into the darkness. David. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we find our adventurers as the story begins about 50 miles away from the Egyptian city of Fayum. Uh, it's late spring in northern Egypt in the year 1922. The five of you are part of a larger party that is on the lookout, along with Professor Hewitt of the Cairo Antiquities Museum, for uh, an ancient site that he believes he has new clues regarding, the famed lost pyramid of Renpet. Renpet, uh, ancient Egyptian goddess of spring and fertility, and other ancillary things and the way the Egyptian pantheon will branch out in different localities to different specialties. Um, it's the third day you've been out. And uh, as it's the hottest time of day in the early afternoon, as is uh, the practice of Hewitt's dig, um, the guides and staff have arranged a little siesta of sorts. So, you know, Simple affair, stakes in the sand, cloth around them, you know, water the camels and, uh, and serve, you know, tea and, you know, simple food. Um, there is a, you know, the folding table has been set out under one of the shades and uh, Professor Hewitt and one of the guides are going back and forth in broken English and broken Arabic and looking at maps and the professor has sheaps of hand copied hieroglyphs and they're both pointing in slightly different directions and talking. Uh, while you take your rest from the worst of the day's sun, why don't you introduce yourselves? You're all of course acquainted to each other to varying degrees, but uh, to the listeners that we imagine. Well, I'm surprised they haven't heard of me. I'm Larry Roxborough, uh, antiquarian, hunter and adventurer. Uh, I like to be where the excitement is, and if we can find a new pyramid, then by golly, my names will be the history books, and you will know who I am, or I am not Larry Roxburgh. Dennis Davies, if you haven't heard of me, you don't need to know anything about me. Um, I suppose I can tell you that I'm at least, I'm from Scarborough in England, and I am uh, part of uh, the Davies estate. Uh, I met Professor Hewitt a number of years ago, and uh, he invited me to go on this uh, trip with him. Well, I'd That's be all. surprised if you'd heard of me, Alex Moore. I've been an assistant to author Daniel Mallory, great, great author, but uh, I'm just I can't get anywhere by just being his assistant. One of these days, though, I'm going to come up with a great story. But that day's not today. So here we Perhaps are. Perhaps because you pushed yourself ahead of uh, Dr. Mallory and <laughs> telling us who you are. That's all. I feel like my introduction has been given for me. Uh, Daniel Mallory, best selling author. Um, you've probably heard of my works. If not, you just don't like literature, really, do you? Um, here, here to have a to have a good time, gather some research with my uh, good friend Mr. Moore, and yeah, hopefully get some inspiration for some some good adventure story set in uh, maybe ancient Egypt, as it's all the rage now. Hey, ride that cash cow while you can. Doctor Dirk Bartellamy, I've a. Uh doctor of medicine who has graduated from Harvard, and I'm here to make sure that these bumbling adventurers don't hurt themselves too badly. So uh, far, he hasn't had a thing to do. As it should be. 
there's a, a snap in the um in the fabric of your heads and uh and then you hear one of the camels hiss and rear up and it, it's uh, it's begins spitting and when you turn and look the direction the camel's facing the sky over the dunes is a dark almost blood red hue and even as you sort of marvel at the unlikely and sudden change uh the wind begins to snap up as well and you feel little bits of sand pelting you about the face uh the camels are in a bit of a fright and the wranglers are running around with them sandstorm uh, sandstorm is the general cry uh, of course you know hewitt and one of the chiefs is, are like trying to get the papers under control before they disappear forever in the sands uh and you all begin looking for anything you know to shelter you but it's dunes in all directions i'm gonna cry to the tent but there seems like there is no tent the tent the night tents are all on camels right now packed for the day um because you've been traveling each day mm-hmm. uh, and it's God. just just dunes around us there's no like rock outcroppings we can seek shelter towards we you there is sand as far as the eye can see uh and in fact mm-hmm. you would be alarmed to go over one dune alone because they all look so much the same although at the moment they're actually shifting uh it's a little bit like slow motion ocean because this as the wind is picking up the dunes start sliding down on the lee side and raising up where the wind is blowing um uh, yeah, you should all together. scarf up, band together. There's a there's a lot of uh, overall chaos afoot, and the visibility is dropping quickly. When Professor Hewitt cries out, uh, and you can hear him over the increasingly howling wind, and he says, "There, look there! All I see is sand. It's in my eyes. Where are you pointing? Good God! Use words, uh, not your hand." <laughs> away from the storm. <laughs> As he's being buffeted, you can see him point, and there is a small structure uh, visible less than 200 feet away. Uh, it is pyramidal in nature, but doesn't seem very large, although scale. Um, so there's a general scurry toward this mm-hmm. possible um, point of protection. If it's good enough we for a dead guy in this to- storm. Yeah, head there. Yeah, we need to get on the lee of the of the of the the building the the pyramid to uh, stay out of the wind. Uh, Safety first, everyone inside. Well, <clears> as <throat> you as you gather at that, it's just the tip, and you realize you thought it might be a smallish structure, but it's made of huge marble blocks like a pyramid. But it's only maybe fifteen feet above the sand. But it wasn't there 10 minutes ago. I mean, it was there, but the sand occluded it. Um, And the blowing storm has revealed the top of it. Uh, And there is a rectangular, differently colored area set back from the main stone with Egyptian seals on it. Uh, And Hewitt's got a couple of men sort of hammering away at it, as far as you can see. Um, At this point, a couple of the camels have fallen um, and there's a lot of scrambling and people try to gather equipment and, you know, a bit of a scrum toward the top of the structure. Um, is there anything, in, you all have some gear on your person. Is there anything you'd like to try to grab? Before water the storm? jugs, if there are water, water skins, probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Have water. I'm going to grab my leather medicine bag. Good. Well, I have to make sure my lucky hat is still on my head. Pull it down firmly. And uh, the only thing, uh, I assume my revolver is just in a holster on my hip already. Yeah. So a flashlight. Uh, the thing that I'm not already on my person that I would like to grab if I can is a flashlight. Very good. A pencil I just grabbed by Lee Enfield. Uh, there's an audible crack above the increasingly high-pitched wind 
uh, as the um, seal uh, over the over this rectangular entrance cracks and breaks open, and um, the sand is already like if you if you stop for a minute, it'll be up to your calf. Uh, some people are huddling on the lee of the pyramid, but it's not a great shape to hide behind, of right. course. Um, uh, Hewitt, uh, you know, is, is, is waving and shouting and covering his face. He says, inside, everyone, inside! Uh, and you tumble in. Oh, sand and work, workers following you. Uh, and there's another violent crack. And uh, would you all roll luck for me? Pass, 18. Uh, 64 is a... Okay. <laughs> 22. Three good, two bad. All right. Um, however, the workman in a panic broke open that seal. Um, it's unstable. And as you stumble inside, first of all, you're on a, in a on dark stone that is sloping. So you start to stumble into the darkness yourself. Uh, and then there is a tremendous crash as more and more stone falls behind you and sand and a few odds and ends. You hear a couple of muffled cries. Uh, and then there's just the rattling of small pieces of stone disappearing somewhere beneath you in the darkness. Good God. There's a little bit of a high thrum of the storm swirling over the top of the pyramid, but you are far from the stone, far from the wind, rather. Uh, Any port in a storm? I'll flick on my flashlight. <laughs> Anyone I'll... hurt? Yes, who's hurt? I can address the injuries. So uh, you've got, you know, bruised limbs, uh, one hit point for the two of you that didn't pass. Um, you can choose where a rock hit your shoulder or leg or limb. Um, nobody got it in the head. Uh, and there aren't no, um, you know, there's no bleeding. Uh, I don't know that even with a medical bag, there's a lot you can do about a recent concussive injury like that. Um, and, uh, you know, you scan behind you and there's uh, a lot of broken, heavy stone and no sign of light beyond it. Um, there is uh, the, the uh, passage angles, maybe 20 uh, d degrees down from level. So you can stand on it but it's easy to slip. It's fairly smooth stone, uh, except for the junk that came in with you. Uh, there is some canvas sticking out of some of the rock at the bottom of that scree. Uh, it's got some blood on it. Um, so some people were more injured than the five of you. Uh, there's um, a few stakes sticking out, you know, of the same kind that we're holding up the tents or, you know, drapes outside. Um, there's uh, a length of rope partially coiled that extends into the rock. Uh, and worryingly, uh, there is Professor Hewitt's sketch of uh, what he believed to be the lost pyramid of Ren Pet. Is Professor Hewitt with us? It is just the five of you. So we can sort of assume that maybe he got squished. He could be in the, yeah, he could be squished. He could be outside in the storm. Uh, so this is one of the documents that he was so excited about uncovering. Um, of course, none of you can read hieroglyphics. Right. Uh, but it looks sort of like that uh, map of the, uh, the Cheops pyramid. Mm. And we must be somewhere near the top. Yeah, I guess that's what near the, the king's chamber. Well, at least that means there's this hope for us yet that there's one, two, three, four potential other exits. I believe some of those might just be air shafts. 
Yeah, the, the two of them um, in the middle, I was thinking, may, maybe if you're a contortionist, you might be able to get through. But... <clears throat> well, who knows? Maybe those entrances there buried beneath the sand. Well, they'd be quite deep beneath the sand. Yes, but there's another entrance that seems to be at about our level. Yeah. Um, Across from us, yes, maybe the other side of the uh, sarcophagus chamber. We just have to make our way there. That's even if this map's accurate. We'll keep the map. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyone who would like to roll archaeology or history is welcome to do so. 30 is a pass on history, regular. Good. Oh. 80, 89 is a catastrophic failure on my archaeology. What strikes you, Larry, is that there's good news and bad news. It's very strange for there to be openings at this height on a pyramid of this apparent scale. Um, so there's this, so this is a weird pyramid, which is a little off-putting. However, the chances are that he thought that this drawing represented the pyramid of Renpat, and you found a pyramid that's got a strange structure. So at least it's probably the right map. Uh, it seems less likely that there's another pyramid that has this unusual component. So that's I'm, something. I'm going to, it's desperation. I'm going to put my face up near the rocks that have caved in and I'm going to yell are you all right? See if I hear anybody on the other side. Um, it's pretty echoey in the channel that you're in and there is nothing on the other side of the fallen rock except for howling wind and that's quite muffled. I don't know that they've, they're going to survive out there. The, the visibility when you fell into the tunnel was very poor and the sound of the wind was like being near a, a freight train and now it's a it's a it's a whisper a, a humming whisper which indicates that the matter between you and the storm is a lot, a lot. yeah and doesn't look like we can shift any of it it's too big uh, there's there's a lot of little junk you could move but there are the, the blocks that have fallen in are too big tons Tons. and they're also you know wedged on top of each you know and there's no place to lever it's it's not good in that regard um i believe four of the five of you have flashlights i think three of you had something like that before larry grabbed one in the panic the closest i've got is matches Mm -hmm. i have Um, a flashlight I so will be we, sticking close. I have nothing. Oh, it's only three of you then. Okay. Um, we should only use one at a time, however, so that we can preserve the... Thinking of, what you, thinking of what you mentioned about the stone, you said it specifically it was marble. Does that seem a little weird for a pyramid? Um, the external parts of most pyramids were marble. Oh. Marble uh, and then the inside was something cheaper and uh, more, more readily available. So the Great Pyramid, for example, was was gleaming white surface when it was new. It's just been pillaged over the course of millennia. Um, the rock that is on top of you, while you know granitic, isn't isn't very pretty. It's just massive. Yeah. Well, I say we go uh, further down the incline and try to find that other entrance. That's that's our best way out, I bet. Our best chance. All right, so how many people are lit at the moment? We also have water here, which I grabbed. Uh, If you uh, don't, we have to conserve it, but if you're thirsty... Uh, it, you know, it was notably before the storm, it was, you know, dry, but quite hot out. Uh, and in here, it's 50-ish degrees. Oh. Um, because essentially you're underground, even though right. 
it's, you know, the tip has been exposed. That was quite recent. And the thermal mass of all that stone is significant. Um, so uh, are both Larry and Alex lit up at the moment? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep my light on. Do I have a vague idea of how long my batteries last? Um, you know, you're not in the habit of sort of using one continuously until it runs out. Um, you have a matter of hours, not days. Oh, yeah, we only need, well, we'll be fine. Spoken I'm like optimistic a true investigator. <laughs> Uh, so in what sequence will you head down the passage? Uh, I'll go first. So you've got a flashlight and you're pointing and Alex has the lantern, so it's more I, general. Yeah, I radiate. So I'll be more towards the the middle back. So. Well, as long as you're finding any obstacles and warning us about them before we get to them. As you can... proceed you know, somewhat cautiously down. After all, you've just experienced a calamity. Um, the only thing you're finding in this passage that isn't just old, ancient stone that's pretty closely fit is anything that fell in with you. If there's a chunk of rock, it's just skittered down past you as, as things fell in. Um, and so you make your way down uh, and uh, as, the, as, as Hewitt's map would suggest, you find yourself entering uh, a substantial chamber. Um, it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call yards and meters equivalent for inter or cross Atlantic ease. Uh, they're close enough. Uh, the chamber that you enter and you, I assume are flashing your light around is uh, some 20 yards or meters deep. So it's, you know, a, a large open space. Um, it's about five yards wide and a little taller than that. Um, there's, you, you know, again, in the initial and, and nothing, you know, impedes your entry. Um, so as you, you know, flash the light about, you know, um, Alex Moore's light isn't big enough to take in, you know, this generally, like you can get an impression, but you'll have to move closer to inspect it. But what you broadly can see is that, uh, it's, um, it's substantial, uh, and it's got a, there's a large stone table or raised dais in the middle. It's, it's a good like five yards across itself. It takes up like a, a significant part of the room. Um, and there are hieroglyphs on the walls and you know, there's bits and bobs that you'll have to sort of make your way around to look at. It's deathly quiet. I will uh, turn on my flashlight for a moment and see the hieroglyphs. Uh, there are um, lots of scenes of daily life. The, uh, the artistic quality you would rate as, as quite high. So this was not a, a low rent pyramid or, or something that was done by rote, but something that was some powerful person's passion. Um, yeah, scenes of scenes of uh, you know, people um, farming, you know, growing things, tra taking oxen to and fro, you know, sitting uh, with pots, just uh, everyday life. Everyday life. Um, and uh, as you as you were inspecting them, looking around, you get closer to the the table. Um, the centerpiece of this room is uh, a, a miniature of the pyramid itself, you assume. It's a pyramid, uh, and it's cross-sectioned, so you can compare it to, the, to Hewitt's map. And it's on this, it's, it's one massive, maybe basalt 
block that it sits on. And on each corner, there are animal totems. Um, they're not mummies and they're not statues. They're taxidermy. Interesting. Like, yeah. like I have some skill with taxidermy. Verify that. Have yeah, you can verify that. You would it's yep. A 20 is a hard success on taxidermy. All right. So uh several things stand out to you. First of all, you expect to see mummies. The Egyptians were excellent at preserving bodies in a particular way. This is not excellent taxidermy. Um because while you can tell that it's been Thing, you know, the animals were dead and then sewn up. There's been a fair amount of decay, especially considering that it's completely dry here. Um, they're, if they looked noble when the pyramid was sealed up, they look grotesque now. Uh, and it's a, a different animal at each corner. Um, there is a group of uh, three cats in one corner. And the next corner has two jackals. And the next corner has a crocodile. And the next corner has a hippopotamus. So it's, a, it's significant that this be a giant rock stone table because those are full-sized animals. Uh, in this dry, still climate, they don't smell. They desiccate it. Yeah, but they are they're twisted and unpleasant. And you realize, uh, Larry, that they didn't like take the eyeballs out and sew them up or put glass eyes in, which you would think they would do, but they just let the eyeballs get shrivelly and awful. And that's maybe how some of the it, they're mm. as a taxidermist, you do not approve. Ghastly things those are. You could say that again. This is a, uh, from what I've come to expect from uh, the Egyptians, this is a quite low quality of, of, of work, uh, amateurish, uh, grotesque. Ugh, I, I don't like it. I, what is the, where is the, the chamber leading out of here? I mean, it's on the map. Is it, uh, is that borne out in the cross section of the pyramid and in the other side of the room? Is there another? Tunnel going uh, if, you, if you compare the uh, cross section to Hewitt's map, there is a, a, a rectangular entryway exactly on the opposite side of the table to where you came in. Um, and you only have to go into it 10 or 15 feet to find that it's also suffered a cave in sometime, oh. probably a long time ago. There's no loose dust or scree. It just, just, you know, walls of massive stone. Mm. Well, I wonder, well, this, this is just a two-dimensional map. Maybe I'm wondering if there's maybe a, a third, third exit, maybe that might be going off uh, at uh, 90 degree, uh, is there any other exit to this chamber? Why don't I'll start you start looking around the wall? Yeah, start looking around. As the map indicates there's one going down, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is that is uh, offset from the opposite fallen uh, passage uh, by a couple of yards. And it's roughly, it's a little bit steeper than what you just came down. And you can, as far as your flashlight will go, it has a bend at some point. Uh, Alex Moore's uh, tracing the periphery. Um, there, uh, you do not see any other uh, doorway shape in the walls, except for the one you came in, the one opposite it, and the one that goes down. No, oh, that is unfortunate. Shouldn't it, if you compare it to other pyramids, shouldn't this be the king's chamber where the the sarcophagus would be? But 
This is a table. Uh, well, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, you generally don't put entrances so high up in the structure either. It's almost as if we're going, it's like an upside down architecture. Perhaps they did this on for a reason. It would be harder to break into a pyramid on the top, wouldn't it? But it'd be, yes, it'd be, it'd be hard for, to, to picture them doing this accidentally. Well, maybe they, maybe this wasn't completed. Maybe no one was buried in here. Well, there's the chamber that shows that it's literally underneath the pyramid. Um, perhaps that's where the king was placed, uh, with the entire weight of the pyramid protecting him from grave robbers. I mean, I, I, I don't know why somebody wouldn't be buried in here. I mean, they have their animal guardians um, here to watch over them. I'm afraid I don't know enough, enough about Egyptian um, I don't know that much, sorry. The artwork on the walls is quite beautiful. Can anyone read the hieroglyphs? No. Not a clue. And no, everyone no. with specific skills in Egyptology is, did not make it into the pyramid with you. Uh, I, 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 can, I can read them like this. Bird, bird, bug, little eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that looks like a little bit like grain of some sort. Um... A couple of squiggly lines, some horizontal lines. Would would maybe would an extreme in archaeology might like point out some a, a couple of what the they might make mean? I will say that um, there were there you you may continue to find artifacts that are more readily interpreted by the layperson, but this is not. I mean, first of all. This, this room is mostly pretty, you know, the, the miniature pyramid is nicely done and you can see what the surrounding terrain looked like when this was made, which was not all dunes at all, but there was a probably fertile valley nearby. Um, the equality of the taxidermy not included, you know, the painting is very thoughtfully rendered, but there's nothing like valuable in here, nor are there any... Um, Stored foods for the dead. Right. It's like an antechamber of some sort. Any cartouches? No. Nope. Nope. So no names are recorded here. Not not here now. Um. Well, stiff up a lip. If we can't to get out, then we can at least explore. Uh, There's the silver lining. If you'd like to, uh, you know, Alex in particular was trying to figure out the way to represent the three-dimensional thing and the two-dimensional thing that you have to compare. Um, you know, your idea that maybe there would be another perpendicular exit was perfectly reasonable, but on the model, you know, one of the, like the channel, for example, you came down, on the outside, there's a hole there with a little sealed doorway even. And the opposite one that's blocked also is physically there and there isn't one on the other two sides. What is notable, however, is that the physical model, uh, you pointed out that there was a chamber beneath the surface level on Hewitt's map. There's a further lengthy passage that descends from the far side of that on the model. Uh, and because this model represents the environs of the pyramid as well, you can see that that comes out of the ground some distance away. Ah, perhaps or it the architect's thousands of years secret ago. way out. You have to go down to go up again. Well, it's going to be our way out soon. Yes, let's hope. All right. Of course, the the base of the pyramid itself might be 50 feet under the sand. Depends how far away it comes out. That might not be. Yeah, right now we don't have many choices. I hope the air in here is good. You know, it's been here for a long time. Well, Mr. Mr. Davies, we could sit here and wander, you know, engage in speculation about the quality of the air, or we could uh, get the hell out of here. 
or have a chance of getting the hell out of here. And I would like to take that option. Yes, Mr. Roxbury, let's do that. Let's get the hell out of here, as you're saying. I vote for Roxbury's <laughs> suggestion. And so you so begin your you descent? Standing here? I'm sorry, what was that? You begin your descent? Yeah. Are we going to use roughly the same plan? Larry in front with his flashlight, Alex toward the back with his lantern? And I've turned my flashlight off. Safe yeah, enough. That's a good idea. I'm in the middle, just in the middle somewhere. Do, do I have my, my walking stick that I came with, or did that get lost in the storm? You certainly, if you if if it, you stumbled with it, there were poles sticking out of the rubble that you could have grabbed one of. I'll just to, to stabilize myself. I'll make sure I, I have my walking stick out too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there is no rubble here. Uh, there are no cobwebs. There's not really what you'd call dust. There might be a sort of a fine film of more or less talc on everything, which is just stone slightly fading over thousands of years. Uh, it's very, very quiet and very, very dark, except for you. Um, and let's say, you know, 20 meters down, you meet a turn, it's perfectly clean. You know, this small platform, and it begins descending at the same level in the opposite direction. Uh, you have to be a little mindful of your footing because it's it's just steep enough that you know if you if you did take a tumble, you could roll a bit and and knock your balance. Um, the passage is I don't know, uh, fifteen feet around. It's it's comfortably wide. You could walk two and two if you cared to and not feel any discomfort. Uh, you walk twice or, or three times again as far and in, in the opposite direction and there's a second turn and you descend and you meet. Uh, it's about as first along as the first leg where you meet a stone stop. Uh, there's a small flat area before it uh, and it's a sheet of stone uh, set into the wall. So it's a, in a doorway, but it's not a door. Uh, on it is uh, a representation of a woman bearing a, a, a palm leaf. Uh, any uh, history or archaeology. And actually, I take a bonus die because you have reason to be here. Nope. Ooh, 41 went to an 01. Oh, out of an archaeology of 41. Brilliant. Well, you so, blew my 30 out of the water. Yeah, you can you can be all uh, superior about this, Alex, which is nice once in a while since, ah. you know, you're the humble researcher. Uh, so you you were certain that there was any question that you was right about this being the pyramid of Ren Pet. This is the goddess Ren Pet, uh, protector and patron of fertility, youth, and spring. The palm frond she holds in front of her is, you know, the, it's the tulip of ancient Egypt. It's the sign of spring. Um, and you, you recognize in, in, the, in her position on this doorway that, that there's a an element of ritual involved. Uh, and on this flat stone wall in front of you and the doorway that has this incised and, and painted image of Ren Pet, there are also four holes, two on either side of the doorway that, that, that recede into the stone. How big are the holes? How big are Yay. the holes? Yay big? Like you could reach someone could reach their hand in the hole easily can i can uh larry can you shine your light in one of those holes of course of course my boy 
Yeah, goes back a couple feet. Um, uh, the stonework is very nice. There is a horizontal bar about a foot and a half inside. And as you look, it's true of each one. A bar, I wonder if we have to push it. Or lift it. So maybe it's a handhold so that you put your hand in, grab the bar, and then pull so the the, the thing slides back. Well, give it a go. Give it a go. Something the, with some muscles. That's something I'm very much lacking in. I'll step forward and stick my hand in and see if I can grab a hold of it. Mm -hmm. It's cold. Drinks. Uh, it's a little rough, but it's actually it's an iron bar. It feels like an iron bar. I push, pull, twist. It doesn't push. It doesn't pull. It twists only clockwise. It twists clockwise. Okay, so I'll I'll go in the one across from it. Do the same. Okay. Does it go more than one eighty? It goes. Uh, it goes exactly forty five, just from from horizontal to vertical. Oh, you mean ninety? Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that's ninety. 90. Sorry. Yeah. Are you calling that out? And it makes what yes. direction, Dennis? Uh, clockwise, ninety degrees. Clock, okay, so I'll do. I'll turn mine clockwise, ninety degrees. Good. Yeah. There are four of them. Yeah. I I'll can't turn it any longer. Turn another one. I will do that as well. All right. There's a grinding sound was the last one moves. Uh, and the door falls into a space beneath it. And takes heavily. all the arms with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, happily, it's just the door that went. Um, so it falls and becomes the sill uh, of the of the passage and there is uh, another couple of feet of stone on the other side and then there's a drop of some four yards substantial oh. drop and you say, as you flash your lights around you're in a substantially larger chamber than the one above i say we're getting quite good at this we should all get medals or something yes i was quite a that was a uh, complex contraption. Was that uh, in any of the other pyramids anyone's explored? No. Uh, often, the from what you know, the mechanisms that the ancient Egyptians used were more like magical seals than mechanical barriers. Um, would you all roll listen? I haven't gotten a single thing. Oh, nine. So a hard. I can spend a couple of points to make it an extreme. If oh, three. He got it. It's an extreme. Right. Um, uh, Dirk, you're the one who raises your hand because you notice something. There's a bit of an echo from the stone slab, which was, you know, eight inches thick at least, falling 10 feet. And as the echo dies, you hear go whine and you, you hear put that? your hand up and Mallory you hear sort of a coughing sound and maybe a I don't know a scrape or a hiss it's hard to tell snakes Boy, and Larry snakes. you you hear that too uh, and you're sort of flashing your light in this new room, trying to figure out what the sound is, and you realize that it's behind you. Why are you pointing that at me? Oh. Uh, as, as, as Davis moves out of the way, your flashlight is just about the end of its capacity, the last turn that you made behind you but you do get two little yellow glints in the distance. Just tiny reflections. Two of them roughly horizontally. Uh, I think we have a snake down here with us or some animal. Um, now again, snake. it's a good number of yards to the last, you know, at the last turn back there. 
Is it, is it getting closer? Is it um, frozen in know, the white? It's, it's, it, it's not clear if it's moving, but it's clear that it's not static. It's not like you, you flash like caught two glints of mica in the stone. It's definitely a thing that wasn't there. Is that, it clear that it's small? I mean, the two little glints are quite, quite, you know, dinky looking at the, in the distance. Well, I'm going to approach it kind of hand on my revolver, but I don't want to blow Careful. our eardrums out. Could be an asp. How could yeah. anything be alive down here? But well, uh, it might have gotten into the sin. Um, so, uh, Larry starts backwards up the passage, um, keeping his light trained mostly on those glints. They blink uh, before you can get a sense of the form. Again, this flashlight's you know working overtime, um, and as you get closer, it's a very damaged and desiccated a cat. What? what the deuce? Who, who put this here? It's very funny, but... Um... Uh, so you're maybe halfway up the passage from you know the turn to where you found the door when you can make out its shape enough to tell that it's you know a dun-colored large-ish, probably tomcat, but, you know, in very bad shape. And it sort of pushes against the stone of the turn and slides part of the way down the passage toward you and then sort of tries to push itself up on one leg and it hisses at you in this dry, ancient way. Would you roll sanity? Yeah, yeah. 35 is a pass on 50. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's zero or D3 for passing and not passing. Okay. Um, but, it's, but it's alarming. It's confusing and wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll kick it. Are you going to get close no, no, enough no. to kick it? Or I thought it, I thought it'd come all the way up to me. Has it not come all the way up to me? No, no. It's it's only gone up, you know, a yard, of, and you're only halfway back up the twenty yards uh, toward it. Uh, Remember, uh, cats I, are sacred to the Egyptians. So, but they, they don't. They don't. It's a, it's a taxidermy. What is? Uh, in kind of a confused fluster, even though I didn't lose any sanity, I'm gonna start backing down and think of the. Uh, Oh, the dogs. crocodile <laughs> and the uh, crocodile and the hippopotamus and the scare me a lot more than the cat. They were jackals too. I think I hear one. <laughs> yes, they're they're yapping, yapping off in the night. Larry, what's what's going on over there? It's uh, it's one of those damned cats from. The last chamber. You mean the the very definitely taxidermied? Yes, the very definite those ones, Mallory. It, Are you playing tricks on us? No, no. Look, I'll step aside and let them see the cat. Good heavens! I didn't can put it there. Can we see the reflection in its eyes? Mm-hmm. Is it moving, or does it just look still now? It's, it's, you know, it, it hissed and then it slumped a little bit and now it's sort of like jerking toward you. Oh my God, you're, you're, you're not kidding. What, what the, oh, sand check. Yeah, and didn't, didn't you mention that they didn't have, our, oh, didn't we, we noticed they didn't have eyes the last time we saw them? They were them all shri shriveled up you know, to nothing pretty much. I'm, I'm a little unnerved by that. On a scale of one to three, that'll be a three. That's 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 pretty unnerved. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to turn back and look into the large room. You said there's a drop, though. Mm -hmm. A substantial drop, about twelve feet. Can yeah. we walk around it? No, it's the the door that's opened. There's a little sill, and then in it's the just air. straight down. 
Well, did anybody grab that coiled rope uh, from the rubble? I hope we did. We should no have. Did. No one did. We should have. <laughs> well, should we go back and get it? It's not like it's going anywhere. Uh, you want to walk past that? I don't want to walk past that thing. I'll walk uh, towards yeah. it and I'll go, yeah, push, 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 push. An ancient Egyptian, no doubt. Uh, you, you, you start toward the cat? Uh-huh. Yeah, but it, cautiously. It, it, it rears up as fiercely as it can, but it's, again, not in great shape. And it, it, it's, you know, it, it, its ears go back, and its teeth are maybe the best preserved part of it. And it... It's not I friendly. don't have any milk for you, puss, puss, puss. Just, just, uh, just leave the bloody thing alone. Let's, here, uh, could somebody... This be- this be Egyptian magic of some sort? I mean, I, I, I don't know, but we, we, we need to keep going. If somebody would be so kind as to try to lower me down uh, part of the way to the floor. That's almost two stories down. We, uh, it's 12 feet. Yeah, well, it, it was four, four meters. Four yards. That's 12 feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. It's a good story. Oh, okay, good I mean, but if you were to lower yourself to your fingertips and drop, for example, a healthy adult, yeah. you know, uncomfortable but not dangerous, oh, yeah, okay. I, I will, I will do it. I will start on this process because I don't like that cat and I want to get away from it. So I, um, I tell it, we mean, we mean no disrespect to the goddess. I don't know if it speaks English, Davies. If it's a goddess, she should be able to speak any language she damn near wants. <laughs> Davies, do not touch it. You don't know what kind of bacteria this this dead thing has. I don't know where it's been. No, I very don't. good point, Doctor. I don't plan on touching it. I just hope uh, Hippo doesn't come around the corner. So uh, Roxbury is ready to drop down into the chamber, and and Davis, before the cat got your attention, uh, you were looking around as best you could in the big chamber again with your. With the kinds of flashlights you have, you can only get a broad impression. Yeah. But it's a substantial room uh, that extends in the distance. But as the map indicates, it's not all level. But there is definitely a large object in the middle of this room, too. And there's m- a lot more glinting and stuff. There's a lot more business in this chamber than there was in the one above. Uh, and, you know, as, as Larry, like, flashes beneath the ledge to see about safe passage uh it the floor there is clear there's nothing to you know to occlude his descent um so larry why do why don't we have each person unless you come up with a trick we'll have each person do a climb roll with a bonus die to not sprain an ankle or something Okay, my 42 became a 22, which is a regular success. Great. Climb. My 64 became an 04. Floating down. All my, my, down. my luck diminished by 12 so that I don't sprain my <laughs> ankle. <laughs> are you sure we all want to go down there? How are we going to get back if we have to go down there? What, what's what's back there, Alex? What's back there? What do you do? You go intend to ask the cat to let you out nicely to dig its way through the rubble and let you out? I'm just concerned that if we decide to come back, we we aren't really going to be able to come back. Look, you'll just stand on my shoulders and then pull everybody so else we'll, up. We'll figure it out. Okay, all right. So I'll come on down. Here. Let's see. Ooh, forty. Climb is. Climb is 40. Wow, I made it spot on. I will climb down. I don't want to be near that dead thing. Mm -hmm. So you roll with a bonus? 18. Excellent. All right. Um, I think we should all take a moment to marvel at a uh, pre-generated PC that had a climb of 40 and actually used it. Not sure that's ever happened before in Call of Cthulhu history. Um, okay, so the exploration begins, uh, I assume. Um, what the, the, the massive object in the center of this room is a sarcophagus. 
like you expected upstairs. Yeah. Is there any way to reclose the door behind us? Uh, there are not four holes in the same place on this side. Um, you you no can winching mechanism or anything to pull it. Back. The machinery appears to be within the walls, which doesn't mean you couldn't investigate that with some time and effort. Um, but you'd also be destroying antiquities because this is right. a royal chamber. As uh, you flash the light around, um, you know the. The, the sarcophagus has gilt on it. Uh, there are substantial, there's some statuary and paintings. Um, we'll start with, as you start to take in the room, uh, we'll start with the mural on one wall. That's one hell of a contortionist act, getting over the top of everyone like that. I believe that's heaven. Yeah, that's sky. But I don't know the rest of it. Uh, yeah, so some of this recapitulates some of the healthy scenery upstairs. Um, there are indication. Uh, I guess we should roll our history and archaeology again to see if there's anything that isn't obvious to any viewer. No. No. Uh, 31 is a regular success on his. Yeah, tw 29 is a success on both. Excellent. Um, so we'll allow you two to interpret. But in essence, what we have here is uh, indications that this, of the status of the buried person as Pharaoh. Uh, mm -hmm. The overarching figure who is the sky is, is, the, is the, you know, the all father, the Pharaoh. Um, the regalia on his necklace and on the queen next to him and the upper center indicate his status. There is no indication of name, which is unusual. Um, but all of the scenery is uh, about the, you know, productive, um, harmonious uh, life of the people in this reign, whatever age it was. Uh, but it is consistent with the, the sarcophagus itself, heavy, well-carved stone, uh, relief top with in, inlet precious stone and gilt. Uh, there are, um, uh, what are the, uh, you know, the, the stone vessels to hold various, uh, oh, you yeah. know, hold the organs, can, can, canopic jars, the canopic, canopic jars. jars are there and, um, uh, you know, and representations of grain and wine and things to, you know, take, to feed the, leader in the afterlife the so that was on the uh, left wall from where you came in um the opposite wall is a uh statue of the god horus uh which is the falcon headed one he's right. a, a, a protective figure and that's set back a little bit um above a painting of the same pharaonic figure uh, with his arms outstretched and slightly lowered um, and uh, blood coming out of his arms and painted down the wall. And this wall actually is the beginning of a descent of this chamber into a second area. So that blood runs down this wall and then, you know, up on the ceiling of the slope that goes onward. Uh, and the uh, left wall, as you, uh, I'm sorry, the right wall, as you, from where you came in is another uh, simpler painting depicting the pharaoh being interred here. Uh, and it appears that this pharaoh, for whatever reason, not only is his name not on the wall, but it looks as though he was interred here while alive. Which is... That's not normal. Very strange. It'd be like if he had committed some horrible crime. But why build this pyramid for him? That that doesn't make any sense. Why depict um, him as a pharaoh? Indeed. Uh, well, anybody who has any occult, I welcome a role. I'll spend four points of luck, and that's a regular success. 
32 out of five. <laughs> Uh, so that's De- Mallory only? Oh, that's three fun. out of five. <laughs> that's wow, such a waste. Larry. A regular success. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, Larry is using up all this important roles. Before. I know. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> going to come back to haunt me. Uh, so uh, the what strikes you outside of the Egyptian context is that the... Um, generous depiction on one wall and the bloody sacrificial depiction on the front and the burial on the right. The occult sense of that is that this is a figure who is sacrificing his blood, his life force, um, beneficially or out of generosity or something like that. Um, uh, Yeah. Kind of a a juxtaposition that it's, it doesn't seem like completely incongruous. They're complementing each other in the sense it's just generosity in different fashions. Yeah, yeah, and and a great deal of reverence toward this leader, and and you know the central figure of him bleeding is um, not grotesque. It's it's uh, the 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 occult sense you have is that his he's offering up his life force in in a generous way. Um, is it to any particular ends or just in general prosperity and preservation of the nation kind of thing? Well, it's, it's not evident from here, although, you know, the, the burial alive is unusual um, to say the least. But again, the, the blood from his arms continues on the ceiling as you descend farther. Uh, whatever whatever they were putting his blood to use for must be depicted further down maybe 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 uh as to the air it still smells dusty but not unfresh um you certainly aren't feeling lightheaded you know the chambers that you are the passages you were in were quite narrow but these chambers a human being could probably breathe in them even without functional ventilation for a while just because there's a lot of air in here um and probably even well who knows if the stones themselves can breathe at all maybe not enough forever but for a little while um the uh all of the as far as you know as explorers antiquarians and readers of fiction about all things egyptian Again, the canopic jars, the, 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 the real and fake stored grain. Uh, there are also, um, there are uh, oil lamps set into the walls um, that you could probably fill with oil and light. Um, if, there's, if there's, you know, among the many things stored here, there's probably oil that might still burn. Um, there, you know, the simple Aladdin sort of a tube that you can put on one end. It's odd is it almost looks like he lived here for a while. Uh, what, what, what do you mean? I mean, there's food, there's a table upstairs, there's a model, there's... And it, 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 the depiction of him being buried alive... To be fair, the lid of the sarcophagus would probably take four men, good right. lovers, to lift up. Mm. But well, he might not be in it. Isn't no. it usually that there's a stone one, and inside that is another stone one, and inside that is a wooden one, and yeah, they are often they are often layered like matryoshka. How was our? Not so mummified feline friend doing. Oh, if I look back up on that ledge. Is it there? Yeah, it's there. It's got one paw over the edge, and it's like its head is sort of lolling. Its tongue, which is gray, is out. But when the light flashes on it, the eyes glint and it snaps a couple times. I say we keep moving. Well, we're going to be famous if we get out of this alive. Yeah, if. 
let, let's see if let's just keep with when we get out. Yes, yeah, so Alex, I prefer when you were more optimistic. Well, is somebody writing this all down? I mean, after uh, all, can you even write, if we all die down here and they find see. our book? Ordinarily, I take lots of notes, but right now I'm a little bit more concerned about getting out of here. Of course, as you're as you're writing the notes, you're going to be like, "We're tracking the pyramid," and oh no, I hear the cat coming. <laughs> it's coming around the corner. Uh, just, no. just in, in big notes in my notebook. Beware, undead, <laughs> stuffed cat. Uh, maybe we were just mistaken. Perhaps it wasn't dead. Perhaps it's just hungry. Needs uh, a, it looks pretty treat. dead to me, babies. Uh, I mean, just look at it. I mean, when I was a child, there used to be a cat on our street that had one eye because it'd been in a fight. And Thing looked pretty desiccated. It's right Wait, there. This cat definitely looks dead, and I'm a doctor. Well, I'm not a doctor. Well, let's let's press on. Where where what does what does the periphery of this chamber look like? Any any hopes of somewhere else yes the again the there you're in a a room that has only three sides the one you came down and then the two with the murals on the far end of the wall the room just continues but it's at a slope the ceiling and the floor slope but a roughly 20 degrees i will head over there and then take a take a look not quickly. I certainly don't want to fall and stumble. Onwards, upwards, or onwards. So down. as you, yeah, as you scan down um, again, there are, there's more there's more fairly bright uh, painting, uh, and this chamber goes down several lengths of what you've just been in. Um, so maybe, you know, 50 yards ahead is the next wall. Uh, and as you flash your light, what glints at you immediately is that there is gold um, uh, ahead of you, as well as painting. Um, the, 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 you know, there appear to be a, there appear to be a series of plinths with 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 statue statuary on each one. Uh, anyone want to lag behind, pick anything up, take any action other than carefully approach the slopes ahead? I'm, I'm certainly taking interest in the glint of gold. Mm -hmm. I yeah, chop the booby I, traps. I, I like gold. I just think we're. we're, we're, we're we're trying to be archaeologists. We don't want to touch anything. Not grave robbers. Oh, there's this, a museum that's been paying you. This doesn't look like a grave to me either. This looks like a wall. Well, so uh, as you proceed, uh, the paintings, similar in quality, change significantly in character. But you're going to look at the gold first. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sorry, every, about 10 yards down the slope, and again, roughly 20 degrees, so a little bit mindful, but it's not like there are marbles here. Um, there's a, 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 a cylindrical stone block in the center of the hallway, which is straight walled, and on it is a statue. Uh, it's also the god Horus, the falcon-headed god, it's eight or so inches high, and it appears to be not gilt, but actually gold with several inset, inset stones, you know, little bits of jade and, you know. On, on a pedestal in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. Okay, now, now, that does not sound like a good idea to be touching. Why? It might as well have a sign over it that says trap here. Well, just, just get a bag of sand. 
You brought think sand with it. you, right? Oh, think about it for a little bit, and then to trap. Um, but if we if we can find a way out of here, we can always come back. But our primary goal should be getting out of here alive. No, no, gold's pretty heavy, and we could smash a uh, a decayed cat with it. I think, and it can also weigh you down trying to climb back out of here. Uh, I would be careful. We we did see how complex those mechanisms were for the door, so they they might have traps. Oh, for crying out loud! I'm going to step forward and fiddle with it. You going to pick it up? Yeah. Uh, there's I a little see. wrench in your arm because that is solid gold. That's thirty pounds or yeah, so. Yeah, that's heavy. Uh, um, and it's pretty beautifully worked. And again, there's that light dusting of sort of talc. Sure. But it's, it's you know, it, it's not even, it, it, was, it was so well-crafted and carefully placed that it hasn't really even burnished with time. And it's a lot of time. Um, there, you see nothing. Dennis and Daniel, I would like both of you in particular to give me idea rolls. Oh, um, I got a 38 out of 65. I'll spend six points to make that a hard. I have no idea. You don't have to spend six points. Okay. Um, it's, it's about, you know, you were approaching it, you were looking at it, you, you, people were shining lights, you hefted it up. What strikes you is that it was facing downhill. It wasn't facing the king. Which is curious, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. given a funerary context. Uh, meanwhile, those of you who are not blinded by gold, um, their paintings, so they're, they're sort of, not arches, but there are sort of breaks in the painting in this passage going downward. So it's basically sets of paintings and the set of painting on either side of Horus. One is uh, clouds uh, raining red, raining blood and red painted waterways and figures in distress collapse next to these bloodied waters. That's on the left. Uh, on the right, um, there are stylized uh, figures of frogs or toads um, in grain on houses covering the land. Um, the, the painter or school of painting is clearly the same as the previous murals, but you know these are uh, d- these are distressing like to look on. They're depicting uh, horrible plagues that afflicted the land at one time. This is biblical plagues. Most of biblical nature here. I'll go a little farther down the hallway. Do, does the or the corridor do the do the Images change any? Do they show other other yes. feats or plagues? As more hurries ahead, uh, on the on the painting to the left, uh, there are uh, humans and men, women, and children, and also livestock plagued with uh, lice, biting insects. They're exaggerated in size. There's again, there's a lot of pretty grotesque. Physio- physiologies and the fallen victims and the size of these vermin. Uh, there's another plinth and another statue. Uh, and this is a statue of the goddess Renpent, R- Renpet, whose, whose pyramid you believe yourself to be in. She again is holding in front of her up, up an open palm frond. Uh, on the right side, uh, it instead of lice, it's flies plagues of flies 
you know, and people with their eyes covered and coming, you know, my, just awful scenes. What direction is the statue of Rin Pet facing? The same direction? She is facing Rin. down the slope, yes. Realize that this could be confirmation of the of the biblical Moses and the something that they've never found any kind of evidence of. I'm so curious. I'll, I'll go a little far. Archaeology. Oh, and certainly lend a lot of credence to uh, the credibility of the Bible as well. At least certain bits and pieces. Of it. What whatever it is, it is groundbreaking. If you get out of here. Right. And this place can be revisited. It's what is it with this if? When? 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 Yeah. When? Uh, is how 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 tall is this Ren Pet statue? She's also about eight inches high. She, if you lift her up, she's also thirty pounds gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, if you were fast, you could kill at least two of the others. Um, mm -hmm. but she'd be a little dented. And then you'd have two others possibly angry. I mean, not to put words in your brain. Well, I, I well, look, I, there's two gold statues and I have a revolver, you know. The, the revolver, I could kill four of the others real quick, but then... Um, Why kill just, us? I've got money. I don't need money. <laughs> I just would like the fame. I mean, the, the prestige. But yes, if, uh, so uh, you know, but Dennis and Larry have both lifted one of the figures just to keep track. I'll continue down the hallway. I'm, I'm curious just to see how these stories unfold. Uh, third on the left, uh, it's livestock, uh, goats and sheep and oxen uh, oh, wow. afflagged with you know, bleeding sores and also uh, carrion birds picking at them and uh, seepage from their corpses into the waterways. Um, and in the center of the path, there is a plinth and there's a statue on it of the goddess Isis. Hmm. And um, she has some uh, blue stones set into the braids in her hair, very cunning workmanship, very beautiful. Uh, on the right side, um, there are their families and uh, even not not a pharaoh, but people who look well off, people you know being born in palanquins and the like, but they have boils, uh, black and red and yellow pustulant boils, and there are again, you know, weeping figures and fallen figures. Is, hmm. is this statue also facing in the same direction, I'm guessing? Isis, too, is facing down the, down the passage. So what, what have we seen so far? Uh, blood? Um, boils, flies, frogs? Fighting insects? Yeah. We should have... Fire. Wild animals, right? Locusts, wild animals, darkness... Death of the firstborn and hail, as I recall. Yeah, hail. The, yeah. Daniel, you, there's a statue for you here, too. He's got my name on it. Well, everyone else is taking one. I'm, um, hmm. I'm oh, are we taking them? I did have mine, but. Oh, you're still mine. carrying yours? Yeah, yeah, I still have mine. Yeah. You know, 30 pounds, even for a strong fellow, gets very yes. tedious. Yeah. I might Just set it down it, and put it somewhere. On the pedestal, right where you got it from. But ever since Larry was talking about murdering us all, then I <laughs> thought I'd better have it. The oh, great narrator in the sky talked about me murdering <laughs> yeah. everybody. You, you can't hear his thoughts. You just <laughs> saw him holding onto his pistol for a moment. I do have a Lee Enfield. <laughs> I thought the acoustics in this place were great for kind of projecting thoughts. Yeah. And... Speaking of which, you hear a, uh, a sort of shuffle and crunch and maybe a echoing kind of I mean it's hard to tell because everything is so echoey 
in these narrow stone areas. Something like a snort. That's Can we a crunch? Uh, I want to turn slowly and dramatically back that around better, with my flashlight. That better not be that hippo. <laughs> I'm both one of the deadliest animals on the planet. Well, as you turn dramatically 180 degrees, Larry, what you see is that it's hard. The flashlight, you're at a distance now. But if the cat was still in the doorway, you would probably see its glinting eyes. Maybe that was the cat falling into the chamber. Maybe it's been sliding down that chamber for centuries. Who knows? Well, it's not safe. It's not safe down here. Look, we're all going to be rich when we get out of here. And there are people that know that we're together. So no murdering one another because you'll get found out. Well, everybody who knows was crushed to death. Presumably. Or smothered to death by sand. Would you take that chance? Depends on how many of these skills set you at. Don't be greedy. It's very ugly. You don't want to be greedy. Be a, be a, a gentleman the way you're supposed to be. Oh, that's right. You're from America. No, I, I'm, I'm from England. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, where? All right, British, British antiquarians and archaeology people have never stolen a thing from any. No, not one. Well, it, it was one time. Let's march on and see what else we find. I suppose we're going to find the other plagues up ahead, but why are they on these statues, and why are they pointed in one direction? Perhaps we'll find the Ark of the Covenant down at the other end. So, uh, you pass the next, uh, you, you approach the next set of paintings. Um, on the left, uh, yeah, violent skies. Uh, some of the coloration reminds you of the sand st sandstorm that you saw outside. Uh, but there is um, thunder and hail and fire, very stylized. Mm. Um, and you can see it, you know, the, the balls of flame from the sky smashing into individuals and into villages and uh, the, the hail, you know, punching holes through fields and, you know, more suffering. The... Um, there's a plinth in the center and there's a gold statue roughly eight inches high of the god Anubis, the, the jackal-headed god. He has got some beautiful black stone uh, cut into parts of his faces, very cunningly and beautifully polished. Uh, and on the right side there uh, is a painting of a plague of locusts. The fields reduced to stubble, um, uh, starving figures hunched and fallen, um, roofs gone from simple homes, uh, you know, repre subtle representations of suffering for such a stylized and ancient art. Uh, there's a, there's a crash somewhere behind you. You know, it's a stone on stone, I would guess. Uh, like a door you, slamming. Not, uh, you know, the, the way that uh, the, the door that you opened fell into place was very resounding and solid and kind of complete. This had sort of the echo of breakage as if something, uh, you know, had, was less delicately. Uh, the, uh, the lid of a sarcophagus being knocked off. It could be that, I mean, again, it's very echoey. Mm. It could be a sound like that. I mean, it's, yes, yeah, it's definitely something, something heavy and stone-like hitting something heavy and stone-like. Mm. At this point, 
you know, none of your lights could extend past the, the slanting chamber you're in. You can only get sort of a haze of the, of the room beyond. Um, and after the crash, there's, you know, just echoes. You're in breathing. Well, let's go find uh, find death, uh, killing all the firstborns, and then just keep it moving. Anyone have a lighter? Perhaps we should uh, fashion some torches. Well, I, do have, I a have some rubbing alcohol. I've got some matches. It's a very good idea. It's very it's expensive a pretty, lighter. Pretty good idea, except I don't know what... I mean, you don't have a lot of... Like, there were... Or, there were sort of oil lamps set into the wall back in the in the burial chamber, but there aren't here. There aren't any oil. And you're right, there are no, this is, yeah, the only things, this is an empty passageway except for the statuary and the paintings. Well, I still have my flashlight. It's, it's in working. Maybe. Order. I haven't been using it. And Maybe. we could always use the fabric of our own clothes as fuel. I'll, I'll turn my lantern off. And Larry, maybe, maybe we'll just go slowly ahead with yours, so we can preserve. You're definitely, you know, at this point, at at the point that you're looking at the the locust swarms, you can see the wall that's, that's at the opposite side of where you came in. Um, you know, if dimly, um, so there isn't much farther to go here. That you can see. Okay, well, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep going. Uh, so as you as you pass your light over to the um, next area, next next panel of the painting, um, it's of uh, it depicts um, darkness over the land. Um, no moon, no sun. Figures feeling their way about. Um, and you know, and falling and suffering. Um, the uh, plinth in the center has a statue of the god Sobek, um, who's the crocodile-headed deity. He's also facing straight down the passage, um, and you know, the pass the the mural on the right is is all mourning. It's it's of the death of the firstborn, as you anticipated. Um, there are weeping figures, groups, there are lamentations, there are small wrapped bundles. Um, there, there are uh, stars and, and moon in the sky. It's no longer all blackness, but it's a very grim. Uh, and then you hear another crash it's heavy, but not like stone. It's splintery, and it's followed by a deep groan, uh, and then a kind of panting Panting? Noise. Yeah. <gasps> Labored, but deep breathing. <gasps> Perhaps, uh, they've broken into the pyramid from the outside to rescue us. Well, what's what will a dramatic 180 turn yet again? Anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you know, again, you can barely, you barely have light strong enough to get all the way down this passage, but there is something large and gray and twisted bumbling around at the top of this long channel. Uh, I think a sand roll would be appropriate. To the extent you can see anything in the light, it's a it's the size of a hippopotamus, but it's yeah, twisted I've, and broken. I failed. You know, using those great rolls on like my little occult skill. Now I'm failing yeah. sand checks. Yeah, you do that. 29 is a pass. So I'm we're good. gonna we're gonna have uh, two for a pass and a 1d6 plus one for a fail. Ooh. 
Uh oh. Oh, and they have guns. <laughs> oh, God. Six. I lost six. six. No. And you have oh. a gun. Uh, so that's two sixes? Yeah. Intelligence. Two, two armed sixes. Yeah. Please roll. Let's see what you understand. <laughs> hey, 89. That's a fail on intelligence. Yeah, it's about fail. time. All right. Good for you. Uh, and good for everybody, given that just firing the gun would damage your hearing, let alone. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, oh, actually, the th- the the three of you that uh, passed your seon, uh spot hidden for me. Ninety three is definitely not a pass. Yeah. I fumbled. Okay. Ninety six. We we all wow. all in the nineties. We have a full three stooges moment where the three of you who didn't fail Seon all turn to run and bonk heads and fall <laughs> off the floor with the sound of coconuts. As uh, me who's holding the flashlights, I ah! that's true. <laughs> that's fair. Um quick question. Who has the highest power? Probably not me. 65. I have I have a fifty. So not me. 65. 265s. Okay. That's just good for me to know. Um, All right. So there's a general mayhem. uh, And uh, yeah, there. uh, Two of you have lights on now, I believe. Um, Well, and if there's something going on, I'll turn my light on. I turn mine off to conserve. Right. That I think that's I think that's what we went to too. So there's a there's a, a another snort in between the wheezing, and then you hear a couple of resounding thuds as the revived giant mammal prepares to launch himself down the passage toward you. Um, I think he'll, it's a big distance and he's been here for thousands of years. Uh, and there's some stone plinths in the way, might slow him down a little bit. So you have you know, a couple of rounds to figure out what the hell to do. Is there, is there a door? Is there a place where we can keep going? Down. I'm going to smash down the rubbing alcohol between us and the hippo. Someone has matches, right? Throw them. Well, if, if we light that thing on fire and then it runs into us, then we'll be on fire. Run but faster. Maybe it's old and desiccated <laughs> enough to where it will light itself on fire. Half of that plan will work. I can light the match, but I sure as hell can't throw it. The other thing I is got it's a good going to eat arm. up all of our oxygen. I'm, I have an amazing throwing arm. So while they're while they're working out the pyrotechnics, yes, I'm trying to find a way to escape. Larry has clenched his down. teeth. You realize there's a little bit of blood because you bit your tongue. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and you're you know you've gone to the far wall and there is a passage. It's just much narrower than any you've been in. There, there's a passage. There's a passage. <laughs> Hippo can't follow in in there. Let's go. I'm going this way in the passage. <laughs> Quick, everyone over here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Larry's gonna get Larry's on it, and in fact, it'll be hard to see except for the light going down it. Um, and down is that propos, it's it's a slightly steeper slope, so Larry's probably gonna fall on his butt, but uh, that you know, he won't, it's just stone, it's not ice. Uh, maybe, well, okay, Larry, given your recent sanity difficulties and True panic. Why don't you roll Dex? Oh no. Yeah. 40 out of 45. <laughs> Fine. All right. So you 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 go what 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 and catch yourself and you do not drop your flashlight. Um it, so this passage, except for being narrower, you could not walk side by side, is like others you've seen. It's, you know, meaningful but not dangerous angle, descending. Well, we don't think the hippo could fit in here, right? Um, I'm not. I'm not waiting is, around to find out. I'm going, <laughs> whether you guys come with me or not. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a question of who can get there fastest if they assuming that you want to. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so let's just do it in, in dex order. And out of 30 in dex. Great. 60. 70. 40. All right. So I'm in front. Yay. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel this sort of flings his book of matches behind him as he rushes away from the pyrotechnic plan toward the hole in the wall. Uh, Alex, uh, you can catch the matches if you wanted. You anticipate this sort of thing from him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're better uh, at this. <laughs> uh, okay. Dirk, did you actually smash the bottle or were you just... Yeah, I smashed them? the bottle. Okay, so there's a strong scent in here and you're looking up and you hear this alarming crash as the body of this hippopotamus crashes through the first stone plinth and rock splinters and there's, uh, and it, it's obviously not, slow. it's slowed down just by physics, but it's not bothered by that. And it's, it's you know, surprisingly small feet are slamming into the stone. Um, and you were bolting? Yep. I'm All out right. of there. Uh, and, and Dennis, you were sort of, you know, again, you were part of this conversation and then you heard the noise and you backed up, but you're not the swiftest dilettante. Right. Um, anything you'd like to do except try to make it to the slender doorway? Um, nope, I think I'm thinking about my own ass, so I'm just running straight to the, the doorway. Okay. Uh, I'm dropping the 30-pound statue. Yeah, that'll probably, that'll probably sadden you later if you survive, but it will definitely increase the speed at which you can move. I'll find it later. <laughs> so you sort of bump up into each other in this passage because... You know, Larry was unsteady when he first got there, and all of you had to sort of find it. And and it's a little bit, it's not, it's no narrower than a doorway in a normal building, but that's a lot narrower than a space you've been in. And it's very, very dark here. Only a couple of flashlights um, illuminate anything. So you sort of bunch up and you hear like snorts and rumbles and clatterings and cracking sounds um, and uh, you know a couple of distinct smashes where the beast has barreled through the ancient pillars holding up these figures and then it hits the door you know a few yards behind you with a sort of horrific dry grunt and crunch uh, yes. Was was the smashed um, uh, bottle with the flammables right near that doorway? It was uh, given like so, so I could toss matches in that direction, or is it just like it's near the passage that was I, farther? In the yeah, it was probably around the last plinth, the one of the of Sobek. Oh, so okay. the the creature might have gone through some of the rubbing alcohol, but I don't think it would pick up enough to, it's not like a tar slick sort of situation where it would have brought much through. Okay. Nor would you necessarily want to light something on fire right at the top of a narrow passage that you're in. Yeah. Uh, even if you, even if he is dry, that might be a, that might be a, not be good, go yeah. badly. But yeah, I mean, and also I don't think you'd get close enough to it because it's, its, its head is sort of slamming into the wall heedlessly, and it's got one of its four legs like sort of smashing around, splintering at the rock as it tries to figure out a way to do its duty. Um, and it's probably not going to stop doing that. It's probably not going to relax anytime soon. Getting near it would so be... we are stuck here. Well, you've, uh, the, you know, you're, you're in, a, in a passageway that continues downward. Keep going. The farther we get away from that thing, the better. 
I am way ahead of you on that. <laughs> In fact, you can barely see Larry's flashlight. Lit it. Oh. Larry, exactly. slow down. Um, so it's a, there's another fork. Um, after, after enough distance that the thudding of the guardian hippopotamus, if that's what it could conceivably be, it becomes a dull roar and it's occasional screech and snort, sort of, you know, not, doesn't echo when you're in the passage in your mind. And when you make the turn, you get a little bit of a sense of sweet air. Um, as though you're not 200 feet underground, which you otherwise feel like you could easily be. Um, and there's a little bit of, you know, a moment of relief. And you remember that you should drink some water and take stock a minute. Uh, and then, you know, the passage makes one of those sharp turns and descends steadily into, into darkness. Um, are we going in the same? Well, I guess we're in a new pat format now because we can't really pass each other. Right. So it's Larry in the front and Dennis at the rear uh, with uh, Mallory and Moore leading Bartleby. Um, and uh, nobody has any statuary. But you have time to think about what you've seen, or are you just going to like move carefully and mind your own thoughts? Yeah, I'm on the uh, not thinking about it stage of my life yeah. in a minute. So I'm, I'm fine. Like going down the tunnels, just keep going down the tunnels. Yeah. Just keep going down the I like tunnels. denial. But that's a, probably a little bit further outside. Yeah. The, kind of the, <laughs> the green part. Time passes. Uh, you realize that you, you know, you don't remember what the storm sounded like. Um, you've been inside this dark place for a long time. Um, and when the uh, when when Larry's flashlight first shows a, a flattening, everyone feels a moment of relief. And you enter a chamber that's um, smaller than the first one you entered with the stone table and the pyramid in it. Uh, it's uh, it's simpler. It's less ornate. It's not um, generally very decorated, nor is the stonework as nice. The floor isn't as, as even. But there is a, a painting. There is a mural on the wall. Mm. Oh, dear. It seems to be an artistic depiction of my earlier thoughts regarding you and the statues. Yeah. <laughs> it's also the first one we've seen that has extensive cracks at the bottom as well. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. There's this also four horrific. holes in the bottom. Like to oh, put your yeah, hands yeah. in. Jeez. Oh, brutality. This imagery is. I've never seen any Egyptian stuff like this. It looks like madness. Everybody's killing everybody else. The animals are killing people. Decapitation. Yeah. Lovely. That's that's one word to use for it, certainly. Mm. Well, let's see if this minority. wall opens when we uh, turn the. Uh, am I correct? There's holes. Uh, yes, there are. There are. Uh, there are holes that remind you of the ones above. There's also at the center of this smaller chamber is there's a sarcophagus, also stone. This does not have any gilt on the outside. It's much smaller. Um, it uh, its lid is sealed with clay, with some stamps in it. Um, cartouches. 
No cartouches, but there is symbolism. I think we'll take archaeology, history, or occult roles. Archaeology and occult are hard. Flint. 48 is a fail. Nope. Okay. We have two successes. Um, and so, and, and uh, Alex, yours was in archaeology and Daniel's was in occult. Can you I spend can... seven luck for a history pass? You don't need to. We're, I, nobody's going to keep a secret about this, I don't think. Um, and you still might need luck. Um, the, uh, it's good that the two of you have worked together because you can sort of coordinate. Um, the, the, the sculpture on the, on the lid of the sarcophagus is again of, uh, of um, uh, wow, I'm sorry, her name is escaping me. Goddess again. Yeah, it's the goddess again, but Rinpen. this time, yes, thank you. Uh, but the, uh, the palm frond she's holding is inverted. Uh, and so Alex has sort of got this historical perspective, like uh, this is identical to the symbolism we saw on the door that we opened above. But the occult perspective that Daniel sees is that this is not the same figure, or this is an inverted or uh, alternative symbolism for the same figure. She was, what was her, her symbology normally? Springtime. Fertility, Fertility renewal, um, you know, uh, upbeat. And again, it, as, as in that Egyptian way, like all kinds of ancillary positive undertakings. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, uh, Alex, you noticed that on that wall with the, when you sort of, uh, got over the violence of the images, uh, those four holes that Davis has pointed out, there is an eye of Horus above and between each of them. Uh, and Horus, the occultist and the uh, and historian recognize is a, um, is recognized to be a, a protective figure. Mm -hmm. And as you noticed also, Davis, this wall is damaged. You know, most of these murals have been very pristine. Whatever sh shifting or circumstance has fractured this wall. Uh, Davis, would you, um, on that basis, uh, do a spot hidden? Sure. I am going to go straight forward and see if there's a latch inside the holes. Uh, spot hidden. Uh, 40, I got uh, 59 out of 45, so fail. All right. Well, that's because you're focused on one thing and didn't happen to do something else. Uh, I guess you're going to turn on your own light to, to peek into the hole? Um, actually, I'm stupider than that. I turn on the light, but I'm just going to stick my whole hand in and see if I can. I mean, I've seen Ouch. this before. Ouch, ouch. Uh, the, uh, this, it's a, roughly the same size, you know, mm -hmm. say maybe eight inches or something, but it's not a, a smooth bore through stone. There, uh, in addition to the iron bar at the back, which seems corroded, there are other bits of iron sticking okay. out so that when you reached in, you just, you know, you took, give yourself a pretty good couple of, Gouges. Nothing. Ouch. Yeah. I'm splattering the blood all over the place. And like, <laughs> yeah, even even pulling it out, like you might have torn yourself a little more. Like it's it's got some broken bits, I think. Could be that. Maybe Looks we... like a heavy laceration. You should wrap your arm next time you do that. It's a pity. You know, he could use some, some fresh rubbing alcohol. That's <laughs> I have laudanum instead. It's fine. I don't need your damn witchcraft drugs. Witchcraft. Laudanum. I'm a man of science, have you? Yes, yes. 
Ah, a few hundred years ago, you'd be cutting my hair. And maybe a few leeches as well. Um, anyways, be careful. Uh, there is a latch in there, I think, but uh, a little difficult to get to. Just go, cl- go carefully. Uh, I'd like to have you all uh, roll for ideas. Not a clue. 96. <laughs> Just you got jam your heart. hand in there again. <laughs> this time I found an idea. Very good. Uh, so three of you, three of you feel clued. I mean, Dennis is obviously distracted by the need for... Ooh, do they have tetanus shots yet? I think it might be a few years away. You'll want to clean those up um, eventually. Uh, so what you... You know, you take in the room, there's a couple of things. Uh, Alex and and Daniel are thinking about the Egyptian symbolism that you've seen. And it, it seems, again, as though probably all of the murals in this place couldn't have been done by a person. So it must have been a school of painters because they're very consistent and and they're excellent quality and they're but radically different material. This painting of a, a group of scenes of violence, it's as though there were an 11th plague. It matches the other 10 that you recognize from biblical sources, but, it's, but you've never heard of anything of its kind. Um, looks like madness. And uh, you, if, you, if you flash lights into the other three of the holes that are under the sign of Horus, they're all a little corroded and they've all got spikes in them. There are also, they all have, the, you know, like the ones before the king's chamber, uh, they're all currently in horizontal positions. But unlike the king's chamber, this tomb is, except for that mural, you know, there are no offerings, there are no canopic jars, there are no that there is no cartouche, there's no name given. Um, so it's, and it's in a sub-basement. You know, it's beneath, beneath of this pyramid. Alex, do you still have that walking stick? Yeah, I sure do, right here. Should we try popping it in there? I mean, I'm just, if you can maybe tap them into place, I don't know, if you can get rotational. Can I knock uh, the spikes down? I don't know. Something. Can I try applying pressure to some of those spikes? Can I clear them away? Uh, You can snap them uh, in places. You'll definitely gouge your stick in the process. Uh, The reasonable impression that Dennis had when he first cut himself that this mechanism was in disrepair doesn't seem apt. It actually seems as though these were built in. Like they needed blood in order to open up the. Well, it's not mine. I'm not going again. I don't see how blood would activate. uh, uh... It's ritual, ritual sacrifice. Did did you, did you, did you manage to actually turn yours, uh, Davies, when you reached your hand in? That's up to the, the keeper, but probably the second I was injured, I yanked my hand back out. Yeah, that was the secondary injury. It was like, ooh, ow. He went, ow, and then, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't so I didn't in. have time to turn anything. Uh, and as for Moore's attempt with the stick, he can kind of wedge it enough to tilt it, but you can't turn it like that. And there is no... The, there is no way to kind of push those. There's no real effect on the the, the walking cane yeah. against the spikes. I'm guessing. I mean, it, it's 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 not modern iron, but it's iron. You can 
you could spend time, you could go and get a rock and start bashing them, but it's, you know, they're not. It takes a while. Well, if this is a door, I want to get out of here. So I'll take off. Yeah, wrap our arms my up. jacket. And I'll wrap it around. Try to protect my skin a bit. Maybe and I'll reach gonna in. decline doing this because I need to treat all of you. You would decline. All right. <laughs> well, all his hands. <laughs> well, I've got a. Uh... I'll take my, uh, I'll do likewise with my, uh, my canvas bag so we can do it. I think we have to do it at the same time, right? I don't know about that, but. Well, that's what worked for the other mechanism. Yeah. The other mechanism, it didn't move until the fourth one turned, right? We all had to have it turned. I definitely recommend getting your arm out of that quick. I'm going to get my medical supplies ready to treat uh, lacerations. What do you mean? What do you mean to get your arm out quick? Do you think the spikes are going to go more? I think maybe your arm, the wall will move and your arm is going to be taken with it. What does the expression on the GM's face tell you? (laughs) I think that they have an ace and a king in the pocket. Okay, nothing I, could I want to <laughs> I want to see now that I've experienced it already if if I can carefully work my hand past the spikes you know so that I'm I'm maybe touching a spike but I'm not pushing down on it or poking myself with it yes Dennis if you Shine the light in, because they're pokey mm-hmm. enough that you can't do right. it by feel. You shine the light in, sort of get one eye up, and and snake your arm in. You can probably grab the bar without getting a jab, but you'll get jabbed when you twist it. Okay. There's probably no way. Like, there... It is, it is maze-like. And this is, again, right. is proof that this isn't an accident of history. This is a fact of design. Well, um, it's going to poke you when you turn your hand. Dr. Dirk, would you like to roll spot hidden? Yep. As the man who doesn't want to stick his hand in a hole? Uh, 22. Uh, so what you've noticed uh, while these fellows are sort of fainting around this problem and trying to figure out, you know, what they can, what to do, the, the, the decay at the bottom of the mural, there's a little bit of air coming through that. That's not a completely opaque stone wall. Or what it's you feel worth. that air through the that part of the mural. Maybe it's the exit. Maybe we could just smash down the wall right there instead of sticking our hands in the. Yeah, but I think we don't really have tools to smash down. Or, or well, you've got the butt of your rifle, of your Lee well, Enfield. I can kick it with my feet. I, I don't know how much. Boots are going to do against stone. Out loud. I'm just going to go forward and kick it with my feet and see if I can. I mean, I'm not trying to break my toes, but I'm just trying to see if the rocks are loose. Yeah, I'm I, assuming you make a kick, you know, sensibly, probably yeah. turning and using a half heel. Right. Not just towing into it like a buffoon. You know, it, it's it, the, the uh, masonry is decayed. A couple of chips fall out. It's not like light shines through that hole. We can maybe pry some of this out. Uh, with, with what exactly? I was going to say, I don't have a knife. I have a yardstick. I have cigarettes. I have a scalpel. 
I, my medical. I got a thing. walking stick. Maybe, but... maybe all the hippopotamus wanted was was a smoke. Um, I'll pull out my Lee Enfield and and hit it. I mean, I can always buy another one. So I'm just hitting it. Yeah, the the butt stock is pretty heavy. Uh, make sure that's empty first before you go smashing it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I took the I took the ammunition out of it. I'm, I'm actually hitting it with the barrel because um, it's more of a pick. You know, it's a small. I'm trying to get a place where we can wedge something and pry the pry the rocks away. That dead cat is right in front of you. <laughs> I know if I hold still, I don't think you can see me. <laughs> so how do we do? I got a 21 on whatever you want to make me roll for. <laughs> I was actually not going to make you roll for hit wall. <laughs> uh, um, you know, it's a uh, like your boot, but a little more effective. Okay. Uh, you could, you know, uh, you could definitely chip away at the wall in this fashion. Okay, that's um, what we're doing. Is it a single layer wall, or is it like I'm digging a hole? Well, I mean, you have not seen any structural component of this place. That was less than eight inches thick stone. Right. So, Alex, you know, help me. The 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 fact that there was a disruption of the mural might mean that water seeped through, or something. But that might have been a thousand years ago. But you know, that right. might mean that it did that for two thousand years and made it. You know, who knows. Well, if there's a door, it's hard then to say. Much a hole it, in the door, hopefully. It, but it's going to take who knows how long to get through it. And we're also hundreds of feet below the earth. An hour? Come yeah, on, this, you this, people really come up with a lot of excuses not to try something. Yeah, this, I mean, there is air. Uh, doctor, you mentioned you, you felt some, some fresh air coming through there. That's a very good sign. I mean, if this takes a half an hour, an hour, that's, that's worth it. There's air coming through here. And if we, get, if we don't make it, then you've got your needle, arm needles, if you want them. Now I'll take out my scalpel and get to work then on the uh, wall. Oh, that's too much. A scalpel? That's, yeah, a scal that's I think the scalpel we're going to, we're going to, yeah, I'm we're going to pick it. Is too silly. I'll, I'll use my walking First stick. First poke and then ting, and then somebody can scalpel tip in their eye. No, um, there it goes. Let me, uh, let's, I, I'm going to call for a group idea roll at this point. Ooh. Well, what, 92 what again. No ideas here. I got Wait, a 10. Need... Five. Best roll I've had all night. Nice. 47 is a regular. Okay. I failed. Um, uh, what strikes those of you who are comparing the, the above and below doors is that the, the slab that featured the goddess that fell was a good eight inches thick. And so although there might be air holes this way, it might be a much slower process to get through maybe eight inches of granite with a rifle butt and a scalpel than it will be to. Did anyone bring any dynamite? Mechanism. <laughs> sadly, it was all lost in the sandstorm. Well, or not sadly, probably. <laughs> it's always sad if dynamite goes missing. <laughs> it's it. Well, I think there's a second, there's a, there's a, there's a, a parallel game that happens when you try to figure out how to set off dynamite in this small stone room and in not holes. Mm, mm. And, and way up by the hippo. Yeah. With it's like, just outside of its reach. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, nobody has any. Well, I, 
took it up, taken my jacket off, wrapped around my arm. I'm reaching in to one of the holes. It's just going to get snagged. Well, mm, I'm, you're very dexterous. I'm gonna try it. You're an antiquarian. I'm sure you have All delicate. Right. We need ants. four of Ooh. us. Ooh. Hang on. So. Think it, it, this is uh, an arm going into a hole that when you turn it, it's going to stab you in the arm. Isn't that a little bit reminiscent of the uh, pharaoh upstairs slitting his wrists? There's some... Blood sacrifice. Some kind of yeah, there's some kind of parallels going on here. Interesting. I don't think we should do it so much that we slit our wrists, but... We'll definitely bleed some. I was able to pull my hand right back out. I'll get the gauze ready. Without yeah, turning you, it, though, if if you end up turn clip, it. if you if you end up stabbing your arm and clipping a clipping an artery, that's going to be pretty. Well, horrible. I'll turn it very carefully. Yeah, you turn and it, and if it mm-hmm. feels too artery punchy, I'll stop. Oh, but so Larry's going to could... Larry's going to do what a, a different one than Dennis did in solo. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, you you stretch in, Larry. Again, you got light on it, uh, and you know you can thread in. The fabric is catching more than your bare arm would, but you can grab a hold of the bar. You can only turn it about fifteen degrees, no, uh, uh, and time. you do, and you are getting poked. You are gonna, you know, it's not. You're not going to come out unscathed. Yeah, we, yeah, we have to all do it. I think at the same time. But I'll, I'll do another undone one. I'll, I'll flash my light in first, just to make sure it's not got extra spikes all over. And yeah, no scorpions, no spiders, no. Um, so this is only going to work. It doesn't even look like the you know the the metal pits that intrude into this chamber. They don't look mobile like the bar at the end. The stone stops at the bar at the end. These things are just in the stones. All right. My end goes back in carefully. Guys, we need one more for this to work. I have a feeling we're going to need the doctor to patch us up. So ideally not having the doctor be perforated would be a good idea. Yeah. And I'm talking myself into ruining my suit. Take your jacket off, Daniel. You know, this is another reason why I keep you around, is you have all the good practical ideas. <laughs> also, if you don't want to ruin your suit, you can take take mine, wrap it around your arm. I'm, I'm going to roll up my sleeve, because I'm afraid it'll get snagged on the metal, and then when I'm trying to pull it out, I'm going to... Or, or worse, it punctures and takes part of the fabric through and embeds it in your arm. Right. And now you guys tell me this. Oh. I'm already here. You, you probably want to rethink your plan. Yeah, I'm we, sleeves up, jackets we've off, sleeves got up. Plans for you later. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna hurt. All right, uh, one, men. two, three, turn. Click. There's a, <laughs> there's a scraping noise, and yes, there are stifled cries of pain as you cannot turn your hand in there without being gouged. But the door falls into a hole beneath you. And the channel that is ahead in pure darkness leads upward. Uh, You should all take um, 1d4 plus 2. Oh, my good heavens. Yeah. That is bad. Oh, I take six. Ow. <laughs> I take oh, four. I, I take five. That's really horrible. Well, did you say it was 1d4 plus two? That's right. Three. I rolled a one. Nice, nice that is roll. a major wound for me. That I'll means go to Larry. Turns out I did not stop when I felt too artery punchy. I lied. Yeah, you can go to Larry. Uh, in the meantime, Larry, that uh, your arm is uh, inutile. A major wound means you can't use that hand. 
Told you not to wrap I it. I got an 09. Can I make that? You, you're not oh, that's an extreme. More, yeah, you're not going to okay. do any better for him. Uh, is it, I'll ease the pain with some morphine. There you go. Oh, there you go. You get, oh, you get a hit point back and you feel better. Yes. Morphine all around? Yeah? No. Should I roll for everyone? Nothing when you're like deep underground like getting... Can you like to be completely coherent? Totally stoned. I would love some medical attention, though, without the morphine. Everything's great, guys. Of course, Mr. Moore. Thank you so much, doctor. Damn, that hurts. Like a well, I, would like I felt that one for Mr. Moore. So. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no improvement. Uh, you've also, uh, the four of you have lost all but one of your magic points. Oh, my God. And you feel a sense uh, of sort of vacuous feeling of something ineffable lost. And it's a little, it's a little fearful. Um, it was, but now I have morphine in me. <laughs> So Larry doesn't care. <laughs> so um, so I Larry, passed for Daniel and Dennis, if that matters. Yeah. So what, they only get one each back, but I'll every bit it. helps. Uh, Let's get the fuck out of here. Larry, naturally, um, who is feeling no pain, is again hurrying along the, this next stone passage. This one, again, leading upward at an angle, not unlike the last one you went down. It's dark and it's quiet and it's cool. Uh, and then you have a sort of confusing moment where there's a little bend and there's light that doesn't come from Larry's flashlight. Uh, and there's air that smells new and yeah you bound out the uh this this channel uh from the lowest passage leads into a valley that uh used to be a lot higher than it is now but still is in a wadi there is an oasis nearby visible a small pool of actual water and trees around it there are shepherds in the distance and as you emerge, dusty and frightened and bloodied, you know, one of the fellows notices you uh, and hurries over with offers of assistance. In fact, uh, as you get your bearings, and it's very bright out, even though it's dark, you know, it's late in the day, and you can see the discolored sky at the sandstorm off to your left in the distance. Uh, you can also see some of the camels and uh, crew that were with you when you uh, began the day. However, behind you in the dunes, there is no sign whatever of the top of the pyramid. For good or ill. You got the back door. It's fine. You do. You have a, well, if you can go back that way, yes. Um, you have survived, and you have not caused the eleventh plague to rediscover the world and doom mankind to madness. So, congratulations on your blood sacrifice. Uh, that was the risk of the plague of the pharaohs. Ooh. Ah. So we don't get to go back for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> The good news in that regard, I mean, the bad news, the really sad news is that those beautiful statues are totally crushed by a hippopotamus. Like he just ruined all that art. And we should have set him on fire then. <laughs> uh, I don't think we would have made it out if we let him on fire. Did, did, did Professor Hewitt manage to survive? Uh, The, the, the scenario has a few ending options. Um, I do not think that Hewitt makes it out in the case of your solving 
the mystery and preventing this calamity. Find that pyramid again, and this time go in prepared. Take an extra large bowl of catnip to occupy the uh, the undead felines. Yeah. And then hippopotamus nip, is that a thing? No, you just take like a big white round ball because I hear hippos go crazy for those things. Yeah. Nippopotamus. We never met the the alligator. He was in there somewhere too. The croc. Mm. And the two jackals. Yeah, jackals are like, like little dogs being attacked uh, by uh, I wouldn't like to be attacked by two undead jackals, frankly. No. They're kind of like hyenas. Oh. But I mean, the, the, the cat is super friendly. Yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is give him some cream and give him something that he hasn't eaten in 2,000 years. I mean, <laughs> they're just... Fish. They're just psychopaths who really want your attention sometimes. So that's all they so, want. <laughs> so what more is there to the story? What what would have happened if we'd have broken through the wall? Then we would have released the 10th and 11th plague. Yes. Uh, the, the, um, the reason this pyramid is lost is because uh, of the schism in, in that that followers of this goddess, um, one of them decided to purge the world of humans um, to have an eternal spring full of fertility and green and goodness. And so, you know, the the pro-human priests murdered this this evil priestess of Renpet. And they, she was the one in the in the sarcophagus down in the basement. She's yeah. the one in the basement sarcophagus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of the statuary and the wards were about keeping her trapped, and that's why the pyramid was lost because of you know good magic, basically, because she had to be she and this plague that she wanted to unleash had to be lost. Um. So had you broken through and not offered a blood sacrifice and the life force via magic points that you gave up, then her sarcophagus would have been not open to the world. Had you not gotten out of the basement or the pyramid for whatever reason, eventually Hewitt was going to get in and open her sarcophagus and let the plague out and drive the world mad. Um. So, again, you guys squeaked out a, a, a good choice and survived. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Matthew Sanderson, Alex Sun, Stuart Lightley, and myself, with David Gasway as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows, free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Riley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure in the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.